making moves in a sumbo some common over 50,000 rand to invest in a business. 13 entrepreneurs will get a chance to showcase their businesses. Businesses. Each entrepreneur will get an opportunity to pitch for this investment into their business. The judges will use their own discretion. We'll go through to our final episode where they will battle it out for the grand prize. We're like making moves in Jalongom Somlugo. Go 2 p.m. Quiz APC1. Msansi for sure. This is what we've been building up to for the past three months. Namplanj, elamanga mugu money in the bank series yet. Ukumbu le uguti ge el lot ala lama business es na lo lapa gu top for yet. Lunga stola zentran chain il pumele lo na lo mkome lo mkuluga nga uka 50,000 rand investment ku business la. Lapa kwa making moves si kuboni sama business angu 13 asu asu gen. Wona lama business gate fufusa futi ge epetu anga bantwa ba shage bagulele. Competition has been stiff. Kotwa. Now my business is a man who is now a lap. You want to get to us, it's a man who is with. Kunga gonje be na tige lana nam tlanje. Ukumbul, the stage is set for one last chance to win the prize. There will be no second chances, no time to fluff. Winner takes all. Ngabo uba anozo pumele. Pumele. The stage is set. And I've handed in my resignations. His strength is in his work. That we are not visible in our center. That she loves her brand. We have our cobbler in house. His business, we understand, we can relate to. To click the door like a day three. Le Rebelle is investing in the right space. She looking to tell a pagli a pitch. Uh, we we. I just um I'm I'm. And like uh, forty thousand three hundred and. He can have more money in his bank account by finding a different service provider. Yes, we don't know, you know? that. the two judges that will be helping Pepsi to make a decision on which entrepreneur deserves to walk away with the 50,000 rand investment prize. Abigail Kuluse, she's the founder of Tushia Advisory Services, providing design and implementation of SMEs and entrepreneurial development program. Dr. Lucas Muloi is the founder and CEO of the Chunto Group, a black-owned company with interest in property, entertainment, and consulting. The stage is set. For our first entrepreneur to go meet the judges. Go to Anga Pango Uti and Nagosuma Pinsu to Ayofan and Amacha's wait. I guess he's with Mukakeshua Kanga Pambilin Uti Niganetis. Footy, Wabona and Janigama Tuba Ayogilins is a lay. Cool pitch. Therefore, from the Fika Consulting Company, I think he stands a great chance of winning. Firstly, because of um, his business model, he stands a higher uh, chance of. Uh, being sustainable and actually growth in it. He wants to start training and developing the youth in, within his area into furniture manufacturing. His business can be profitable because of the product that he's manufacturing. Babu uh, Shaba? Mr. Mzalos. What are you Ah, uh, nervous, mm -hmm. nervous, but I'm ready to do my best. Yeah, Baba. Ne tu bello to? Iska tu ya sazi futi naso, bafu. Mo pa zile ali kitu bello sibili gela. Yes. All the best in this one. Baba. Shona kona baglindi ne ne. Yeah, Baba. Thank. Good afternoon, how are you? Afternoon, sir. Good and you? Fantastic. You look sharp, man. Congratulations, you've come yeah. looking the part. Yeah. Thank you. I think uh, he's, yeah. he's taking the time to look proper. <laughs> All right, let's hope your pitch is as good. You've got three minutes. Talk to us. All right. Uh, from the last pitch, uh, I've learned a lot from, uh, from the judges and my coach. So uh, we've done a bit of research on the market, on the, on the furniture industry market. We've managed to, to approach some of the big shops to supply them with furniture, and they're willing to come on board. 
uh, we, 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 we research on, uh, on a part of pricing. So our prices will be fair and honest. And then on a, on a product consistency, our products should be consistent in terms of renovations more especially. And then we're still looking at uh, buying the furniture on using, uh, on buying the, the machines with the 50,000 rand. And then that, that offer, that, that still stands. And then I've handed in my resignations from the, from, the, from the last time that we spoke about so I can concentrate more on the business and turn the revenues around. And then we've cut the, the prices, uh, the, the, the percentage on uh, on the on the charity that we, we we sponsoring so we saw that it's it's not entirely our business to to sponsor them with with as much money that we we're doing in the business so we want to push the business forward by cutting the the costs of of the of the charity and then by me being in the business full time it will help the business to move forward so we'll be sponsoring we'll be we'll be supplying uh crafters market again we got a contract again with crafters market we'll be supplying uh, uh, we've got a, a spot at uh, at Lakeside Mall and uh, outside Lakeside Mall that's where we'll be putting our furniture for the market to be sold and then we've, we on the media we, we we've acquired uh, 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 Hill Pro FM we, we with Mapaseka Mukwele and we'll be having uh, uh, an interview soon this week with uh, with my with my Paseka to to move the business forward, talk about the business and talk about our products and how innovative are they. And so in uh, in the next two in the next two months, we're looking at building a workshop for skills development for young for young people who just left school, so they can uh, perform this craft that we are doing. So we we expanding as a business. So we've got. Uh, a turnover in the last three weeks, we, we've managed to acquire about 25,000 rand from the money that we were making the last months that we, we, we managed to acquire about 25,000 rand. So we've got orders that are coming in consistently and uh, are we making a progress from where we were until where we are today. So as a business, we are happy to say today we can produce quality products by buying machinery. Most of our money we used, the profits we, we buy machinery to invest back into the business. Hence, we need the, the 50,000 rand as a business to move forward, to see the, the South Africa growing by employing more young people and giving them skill. As we know, there's a skills shortage in South Africa, which are people... All right, so most your time of them. is up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to launch straight into a quick question and answer okay. session. I'll start myself. Are you ready to start delivering a skills development program? Your business has not settled yet. Are you ready for that? Uh, we, we, we are ready to do that because we'll be doing the workshop separately from, from where we're doing most of the production. What's the benefit to your business for doing the skills development? Uh, the government will be sponsoring the business with more machinery and necessity tools that are needed for the business. So the, the machines will be on the, on the skills development center and the other machines will be on... on what what on, government program is this? I've spoken to Muresi uh, Jabulo. She, she's on to the government. And she actually approached me, how about we do the skills development so you guys can move forward and get more machinery and more tools that uh, are required for the business. Yes. Abigail? Um, I just have one question. I just wanted to find out when exactly would you start full-time in the business? Uh, I'm serving my two, two weeks notice. I'm left with two weeks. And then uh, this December, I'm done with the 9 to 5 job. So I'm... Um, I'll be busy with the business starting from now in December because we've got orders that we need to finish before January comes. So we know where the business is, where the business needs to go. So I could also have the, the list because the accountant asked me for the assets list for, of the business. So I, I gave them and then I need to make sure every, every detail, every tool needs to be jotted down on a, on, a, on a black and white so I can supply them for the insurance purposes for the guys that are working knows what's happening in the business. Now, um, the machinery that you are talking about that you want to buy, what machinery is this? It's a lathe machine. The lathe machine. Yes. It's got a quotations on that? Yes, we, we've okay. got quotations on right. the lathe machines. One machine costs about 22000 yeah. So we need two of the machines. Those machines will be making legs yeah. and then the cutting pots to size. So that reduces labor time, that uh, increases production. So the question and answer session is now done. Good pitch. Thank We're going you. to deliberate. 
you can step out and we'll call you back a bit later. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, I did my best now. And then uh, now it's up to the churches to decide on how far I go from me. Why are people in Midrand not finding you? Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to figure that out. As a salon, how do you identify with the cats? For her to win the investment, she needs to motivate how these different things that she's bringing into the business are going to generate sales. I think the judges would like to see that something like 50,000 rands can become 150,000 rands over a period of time. But she needs to motivate how that's going to happen. And I think that was what was missing in her pitch. Uh, more than the last time. Who prepared you guys? Uh, I was going to say the picture. Okay, I was going to say the picture. 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 Winner takes one, there can only be one. Thank you, Sia. I was going to say. Bali, welcome back. Thank you for having me. Okay, the one thing that can kill you today is nervousness. So I need you to take a deep breath. Okay, take another one, count to three, and then exhale. Okay, you didn't count to three. In my head. You've got three minutes. Your pitch starts now. I am Bali Mwabe, proud owner of Kitty's Corner Hair Salon. I am the mommy that understands the frustrations that mommies and daddies go through when they have to do their child's hair. So, with the 50k cash injection, this is how this is a strategy that we're going to use to um, for our business. Firstly, our strategy is going to be used for marketing. So, currently, we're only using social media and Josie Kids as well as our customer referrals for our marketing purposes. We are in North Riding, but however, we are not penetrating the North Riding area. Our customers come from Pretoria, so, uh, Pretoria. so we realize that we are not visible in our center, so that the customer that walks into the center cannot see us. Therefore, we want to use the money for branding. So we'll get signage, a bigger sign, because the current sign we have is very small. Pull-up banners for our pop-ups -up, uh, pop at creches as well as schools. And then a, a banner on the fence of our center. So that will cost us 6,052 rand, 50 cents. We want, we're on Malibongwe Drive, which is one of the busiest roads. So we want to use our tenant pile in there for six months. So that's going to cost us 3,762 Rand. We need a website. So when mommies find out about us, uh, go onto the website, because right now we currently have a landing page and that's going to cost us 6,000 Rand, as well as advertise on the Randberg Sun so that we can target the parents that are at home that probably read the um, the Randberg Sun, so that we are able to penetrate um, the North Riding area right now. So for marketing, that will be a total of 14,500 Rand. Second strategy that we want to use is enhance our customer's experience. So being in this industry for the past 11 months, I've realized that kids get bored quickly and they tend to get uh, restless and they need to be kept distracted. So we are not able to distract them the way our competitors are doing. So we want to be on par with our competitors. So right now we want to have educational toys 
whilst they wait, so whilst they wait, they, they get to play on the educational toys, as well as a television set. So the television set which plays, which plays kitty programs, your likes of your Dr. McStuffins, as well as your Princess Sophia's. Um, that will cost us 8,000 Rand. That will cost us 8,000 Rand. So what our competitors are doing uh, they have TV stalls on every station that they have. What we want to do differently, what we realize that, we, that worked, we've seen that tablets, if you give a child a tablet, they sit still okay. and you can play. Your, your time's up. Um, we're going to have a question and answer session and you'll be able to provide some points of clarity. So people in Pretoria are finding you online yes. and are finding you on Instagram. Yes. Why are people in Midrand, Randburg, North Riding and other areas close to you not finding you online and on Instagram? Mm -hmm. I, I just, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to figure that out, Pepsi, because I really feel that we're not visible in our centre. We are on Malibonga Drive, one of the busiest roads but yet uh, there's no signage, I mean, like all the other tenants have. So I, I really feel that's the problem right now. So if we could, I mean, I've got a school opposite me. I've done flyers, that doesn't work. So it's us not being visible. And the center, I think the center is not a very busy center because the mommies in that center would rather refer to the one that's opposite us when they do find us online. So that's, I think that's the problem. I realise that that's what the problem is. Okay, are we good? I'm covered, Pepsi. I, I had the question about the location to say mm. visibility is one thing, but being on the right location is another. Mm. And uh, just by saying the centre itself is not busy. Mm. So it's basically a destination location, which mm. means mm, visibility will go a certain way, but it's how do you get people to come mm. there? That's probably going to be the trick, but I think I'm covered. I actually don't. I actually don't believe that uh, a location is a problem. Um, I, I took my daughter uh, to the salon to check to check it out and to see the service and that. Um, a couple of things that came out for me is the center is great. You've got a gym in the center. Um, parents come to the gym and parents will bring their kids to the gym all the time or why are they not bringing them to the salon um, you know so so i think i think what 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 it lacks largely is that uh, you as the center how how do you feel or, or as a salon how do you identify with the kids your time is up we're going to deliberate and then call you back a bit later thank you thank you I feel Natsigule Peach Lena, it was better than the Neopala. I feel like I was a bit calmer. You could hear what I was trying to say this time around. And when was a pendulum my question? Have you forecasted what percentage your costs will go up by? No, I haven't. To wash the sneakers that are worth 300 Rand could then cost me 200 Rand to wash them. So my business way to land delay is your picture. Only to have open my lap and go work fresh. Kapamba utispani picture guti hambaganjan. I guess it's with my pressure. I can't even get out in the only time. Firstly, personally, I supported what he wants to spend the, the money on, which is buying the container and finding the location purely because his current condition where he's working at, I don't think is conducive and is appropriate for this type of business and for the client's assets, safety. Oh, fresh? Sure. Do you want to go to the hotel? No. Do you want to go to the hotel? Yes, I want to go to the hotel. Do you want to go to the hotel? Yes. Do you want to go to the hotel? Do you to go to the hotel? Yes, I want to go to the hotel. Shona kwa na gentsi zunge ni la pana, ushai pichi, sibon guti zoha maganjani. Hopefully ya lugu kulo, ya lugu lugu tu semusula. Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Shona kwa na gama. Thank you. Shaba shaba. Good afternoon. Welcome back to Making Moves. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? 
I'm not too bad. Fantastic. I like your sneakers. Thank you. Thank you. They don't look washed and clean, though. They do. They are, actually. It's just the fading of the color. Oh, it's just the fading of the color. Yeah. It concerns me about your products, then. <laughs> He washes them too much. Do you, does he wash them too often? I can afford new ones. Yeah, I can afford new ones. All right, we're not here to chit chat, and uh, we're not your friends. Uh, we're here to decide your fate. You are pitching. You've got three minutes, and then we'll have a quick question and answer. Your three minutes starts now. Hi everyone. My name is Let's Have from Mukwena, and I'm the founder of Workfresh Sneaker Cleaning and Shoe Care Company. At Workfresh, we offer the following services: sneaker cleaning, suede refurbishing, and cleaning leather refurbishing and polishing, and footwear repairs, as you can see on the pictures, and shoe shining, of course. What sets us apart is Workfresh. Our competitive advantage is the relationship we're building currently with laundromats, because as part of our business model, we approach laundromats and we place our services in their, in their facilities, just to maximize on the reach of laundromats. And also, our brand is a very mobile brand. This means clients can call us, we come to their houses, and also client, corporate clients can call us for their events, just like Nike did recently, and Gauteng Tourism did recently. Another a competitive advantage that we have is the potential we have to manufacture our own product, which is a product range of polish and suede sprays and all of that, because of the insights we have, because we are the biggest end users of cleaning products right now. In our first year of business, we've cleaned a total of 2,000 257 pairs of footwear, averaging 188 pairs of footwear a month. This translates to an average of 15,000 in total turnover a month. Now going back to the 50,000, this is what we want to do with our 50,000, because the current need right now for our business is space, as we're currently working from home, and just like I explained, the number of footwear we're dealing with. So the need we're trying to sort out with this phase of our, of our, of our project, this is a three-step project, is the space need. So with the 50,000, we're gonna use 34,500 for the container. This includes the container, the insulation within the container, the foundation, and the fencing around the container. And we've also decided to use 15,500 for machinery and stock inside the container. Because right now, we're outsourcing repairing. But now if we have the container and machinery, we'll have our cobbler in-house, which is also gonna get us more effective in terms of turnaround times. With the container in place, we are forecasting a 30% increase in our sales because now we'll have foot traffic and we're able to do more numbers in terms of our footwear, unlike the limitations we have right now in terms of storage. And what that means is that we'll be able to be doing 245 pairs compared to the 188 pairs we're currently doing right now because we'll have the machinery, we'll have the container, and we'll have the cobbler in-house. That 245 pairs translates into 19,500 in total turnovers. That's an estimation we're making right now. With the container, the container also gives us an opportunity to answer one, the biggest question in our township right now, skills development. So with the, with the shoe cobbler in place, we are in the process right now of getting him accredited as a professional cobbler. That way, the next step will be for us to provide learnership for students who can be trained to be professional cobblers. At the same time, after being trained, because we'll be developing relationships with laundromats, we'll be able to place them in the laundromats after the training. That's how we're going to be using our, our 50,000. Let me, let me make sure I understand you. With the 50,000 Rand investment, yes. you forecast a 30% increase in sales. Yes. That'll come from more foot traffic, so you're being more visible, yes. machinery, and an in-house cobbler. Yes. So you'll be able to do more work and push out product quickly. Yes. All right, um, what about the fact that your costs will increase? Right now you're operating from home, yes. your cost base is very low. My concern is your turnover will increase by 30%, your costs are likely to increase by more than 30%. We've actually considered that, that's why we went to the route of approaching the municipality and negotiating a lease with a lower rate right now. So that's, why we, that's how we, we're dealing with that. Have you forecasted what percentage your costs will go up by? No, I haven't. I'd like to get more clarity on the manufacturing of the products you mentioned. Yes. Um, are you currently manufacturing your own products? And Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Right now we're still doing research. With the insights we have, we're doing research in terms of what kind of products work. Because we are the biggest end users, I'd like to believe, in terms of the shoe care products. So we want to do enough research so that we know when we do a product, it's customized, unlike uh, bulk manufacturing. So we want to do a product that speaks to the need. Like for example, when you wash your white sneakers, they have yellow marks. We want to manufacture products that will deal with needs like that. 
How much, how much percentage of, of the public is really using the laundromat? So the laundromat is a traditional business. Mm -hmm. So everywhere you go, there's a laundromat. So I, I can honestly give you a certain percent to say, a certain number uses a laundromat. But what we're doing right now, we're maximizing on the reach. Mm -hmm. Like we're having a conversation with a lady in Pretoria who owns a franchise of laundromats, who wants our services in her facility. Mm -hmm. um, for the collection points and when you do the collection and drop-off service, do you actually charge extra for that? Yes, so if you call us to come to your house, we use the AA rate okay. to charge you. So we'll say, okay, this is how much your shoes are going to be, this is the quotation. Then for us to come there for collection and delivery, this is the amount. So at the end of the day, the, to, to wash the sneakers that are worth 300 rand could then cost me 200 rand to wash them. So I hope you right. don't wear 300 <laughs> rand sneakers. I, I, I even wear less of that amount. I wear probably 150 uh, sneakers. I won't say the name. That concerns me greatly. For I only wear them to gym. Thank you very much. We're yeah. going to deliberate and then Thank call you. you back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, with my pitch, I'm, I'm pretty confident. I started off nervous, but as I kept going, I was comfortable. So I'm pretty com confident about it. You're still going to need uh, the machine to go there to go test if the equipment is working. Mister, this thing, once we get this machine, it will look like it's over credit for our company. I'm going to go to the picture. I'm a church is wait. I'm Miss Elongom Sebenzwao. Go to a foot no pitch. I go in the Lulaga cool. Capamut Sponens is Wagel and Delayezo pitch, a puma la poly rebull. I guess is Utum Kishwakien, Utin Galins is. So Lebohang is very customer oriented in his product and in his business. That makes sure that he'll take care of service delivery and that kind of thing. You can see when you talk to him that he's very passionate about his business. That tenure that he has around his business is a successful edge. And I think the judges will pick up on that and will credit him for that. Puti. Kunja. Right. Welcome. Picha kyo kina go zo yenzale. All right. Mm-hmm. Uzizo kanjal? Ah, I feel like I'm not in my, I'm happy. Or get lo kono feta today. Mm. Because I have a lot to do, so I have maybe the never seen yana tawari. I completed this thing, but mm. I'm, uh, I'm like I'm prepared now. Shona kona, I'm a charge I three, baglin dile. Only you have one chance. Namtla njuk picha. I give second chance. There's no buya footy so picha footy success. All the best in this. Okay, no thank. Good afternoon. Welcome to Making Moves. To Melama Africa. Bonjour, Angabuti. Kemonat. What's up? Too much. All right. Uh, are you ready? I'm ready, Mister. Okay. Clock at three minutes. Okay. Um, you're going to talk to us about your business. Okay. Camera picture. How we're going to do some question and answer, okay. and then the courts are amongst ourselves and call you back. Okay. Your three minutes starts now. Okay. My name is Lebohan Lerebolo, the director and the founder of Lerebolo Technologies. Basically, we do medical equipment. We specialize on vital sign monitor and defibrillator. So today, uh, I'm just going to show you my task that I have done. Uh, they gave me uh, to, to go back and do the website. So I have done the website. This is the website for Lerebolo Technologies. Yes, so it's one of, this one is one of uh, the project I was working at Laratung Hospital. So uh, while Lerablo Technologies deserve 50,000, we want to buy a testing equipment, which is a, a patient simulator. It's a testing equipment. It's only one. And then it costs 40,380.23 cents. And then that testing equipment, it will, it will allow us to test each and every vital sign monitor that we, that, that we are going to repair. And then we also have toolkit, toolkit, the door clock eight three, and then they cost 2,000. And then all in all is 6,000. So we're going to also need a soldering station, a soldering iron with a station, which cost 854, 54 rand. And then all in all, shelter thing is uh, 53,847. 
and two cent. We we have included already Levete Kamukhare. So if we can win this 50,000 at the end of the day, we'll be able to train those 10 uh, candidates at TUT so that uh, they can be uh, skillful at the end of the day to go and fix the machine because we only need the equipment which is here and then if maybe those people, if maybe you guys, you can give me that 50,000, I'll be able again to test my equipment at our workshop. And then we all, again, we are going to help a uh, Department of Health to create more uh, a job like local local job for, for for us. Because most of the company which are doing this are from, are from overseas. So we are local uh, supplier. So this is the patient a patient simulator that I'm talking about. This is a, a strong patient simulator that allows us to do the job at the end of the day. We don't need us to go and t uh, outsource the testing. We're going to have a, a strong team that we're going to use this testing equipment. Because as I said before, we, we also ha we already have 10 people in place with the Department of Education. So next year, the, the project start. So this is the machine, we call it the incubator. This incubator, we want the remote technologies at the end of the day to know how to fix, because now we only supply uh, the accessories for, for, for this incubator. Like, uh, uh, like if you can see on, the, on this picture, there's a vital sign monitor there which means it's where we get in as Lerebolo Technologies, because this machine is from Philips, but it's uh, Philips, they... Okay, uh, your time is up, sir. Okay, no thanks. So we'll use this time as okay. a question and answer session. I'm battling to understand your business. Okay. You sell medical equipment? Yes. You fix medical equipment? We supply again, yes. Very specific medical equipment? Yes. So you sell other people's brands, I get Yes. Don't those people offer their own warranties? So once you've sold, why is there a need for you to fix? Uh, actually, the remote technology is up to so far because you are still young as a company. You are fixing the old machine at the hospital because those one who has the warranty, the remote technology don't fix it. But once the warranty end up, as like the warranty takes maybe one year. And then after one year is where we get in, we can fix those machines. But now as Lerablo Technologies, we have a, a, a contract that we are going to sign with a Draga. If you know Draga is the big company when it comes to medical equipment. They are going to, uh, Lerablo Technologies is going to distribute their machine. So it's where we get in because they are going to train us how to fix other machines that we don't do. Like you are talking about an uh, anesthetic machine. That's the big machine that we don't have that they are going to offer us. The accreditation that you have, is it to fix all brand, brands or is it a specific brand that you fix? For now, uh, for all medical equipment, we have been accredited for all medical equipment. Oh. So now as Lerablo Technologies only fix two machines. So as I show you the last one, this one also, we're going to fix it at the end of the day. By next of maybe next year, June, we'll be, we'll, like, we'll be able to fix this machine. You've got this uh, uh, team star house day three. Yes. Because cut full box day three, you will get a uh, team day three out. Yes. But you still have got one testing equipment. Yes. So whether Buffix are three machines uh, uh, on different sides, you're still going to need uh, the machine to go there to go test if the equipment is working the same way as you are sending the machine somewhere to be calibrated. Mr. This thing, once we get this machine, it will look like it's over credit for our company because that testing equipment, it will make us, it, it will help us to get another testing equipment at the end of the day. Um, and then we'll call you back. Okay, no, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, right. Yeah, because when we when we enter the hotel, we can see the capital and so I think the picture it was fine. Very simple maths. Okay. Doesn't have to be more complicated than that. He can have more money in his bank account by finding a different service provider to outsource to. It's not going to give us the return. That is impressive. Alright guys, so we've almost reached the end of our process today. We're going to announce to one entrepreneur 
that they're walking away with 50,000. But more difficult is we're going to have to tell three other entrepreneurs that um, they haven't succeeded in this process. So what are your thoughts on, uh, let's start with Lebo and his medical equipment business. Mm. What are your thoughts? The 50,000 rent is not going to bring any scalability in that business. The business needs much more than that to scale it. And that's just where my worry is. I I feel that where it goes in, it should be where it will have much more impact now. Um, it will be like a drop in the ocean. The 50,000 rand, the impact of the 50,000 rand will, will definitely have you know, an improvement, will improve its, his margins and his profit. But uh, same, I, I, I agree with you that I haven't seen the um, demonstration of how that will then grow the business itself and take the business to the next level. It's a very simple maths. He makes 10 rand, he charges 10 rand per machine yeah. that he fixes. Yeah. Currently, he's giving away 5 rand. Yeah. We give him 50,000, he keeps the 5 rand. It's very simple maths. Okay. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. He can have more money in his bank account by finding a different service provider to outsource to. Walk fresh. Walk what Fresh, are your thoughts? I think my, my thoughts on Walk Fresh is the amount of investment, great business and all, but the amount of investment that's required will only unlock, although 30% sounds much, but we're really talking about 4,000 rand increase in this business. So I'm investing 50,000 rand over a 12 month period. Um, yeah, really, I, I, I it's think it's a, yeah. I don't think the investment is worth uh, the, um, the f when I'm measuring the impact, the investment I'm going to be putting in is not going to give me maximum returns or re returns I could be getting. I, 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 like, I like them as a business. He's got a good business. He does. He's got an interesting mm, business. If I was in his shoes, I would spend the money, I would stay where I am, and I would spend the money on just like a, a broader Increase the network. market. Network exactly. So I would mm. create more drop off spaces. Yes. Mm. I would try and be yes. in as many more, more laundromats as possible. The gyms, like we mm. said. Gyms, all of that kind of stuff. All right, let's talk Lifika. I agree. I would, look, I would consider the investment in the business for two major reasons. One is that it does not only um, you know, fit into their value chain. It doesn't only support their value chain and help them to do things easier, better, more efficient, etc. But it does unlock an additional revenue stream for the business. And that for me is growth. One, one area that I'm sitting with that concerned me largely was the quality of the furniture itself. And by him getting a lathe machine, it's going to be able to resolve that for him. People still want to buy what is proudly South African, as mm -hmm. long as you can match the quality of those that you're competing with. People still want to buy what's proudly South African. Yes. Let's talk about uh, Kiddies Corner in Bali. What are your thoughts? I went through, I saw the business. Um, nice business. Is it scalable? I believe it's scalable. It, 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 may, be, it may be more work than the other ones in terms of scalability. I hate that word, scalability. <laughs> what does that mean? It's like narrative. It, it, like what it, does that mean, well, like scalability? Well, in, in the case of Mbali and that, if she perfects the model um, at North Riding, where she's operating now, she's talking about clients that are coming from Pretoria and everything, and clients don't have to be driving all the way. But sometimes she can that's be not able the to point. open another These one. These are there. SMEs. Maybe they don't want to run a business with multiple branches. Maybe she wants to run a successful hair salon for many years that caters for kids. But what I also do think will have an impact is the ability of her to be able to um, improve her customer experience, which, which is speak to her target market. Mm -hmm. And I think her trick right now, the target market, although it's the kiddies, the kiddies don't have a purse. So it's almost trying to say, how do you reach both kiddies and mommies? And you know, so I do think it will have impact uh, for her to be able to, to improve that. Is she the right? Entrepreneur? Is she the right entrepreneur? It's, it's time to make a, a, a decision, I suppose, about um, what business and which business you would like to give money to. So I'll start with you, Lucas. Who are you giving money sure. to? 
very difficult one to start with. I've got two entrepreneurs in mind, extremely strong. I've mentioned already the fact that it not only contributes to improving the value chain, but it also unlocks an additional revenue stream. You, you've put me in a bit of a position. Uh, let me let me let me apply my mind. Let's let's bring the entrepreneurs in and make the announcement. As you saw. Babuela Pima Casa Bonilla won't come a pitch woman as we live. In the night, shooting Nanga Chabula would be Anglo Nagay Chachila. Joa Pelagama Chachis wait, Kumelebacate Umundoet, also Pumele Lago Lucello Late Nam Sanch. Also, my business bet you, they did a good job one. Bowens Lama Pichuabo, Benz Agelobu, the Meleba Wens. I guess he's a Utama Chachis with two Nagay, Babonaganja Nigi Yonkel and Denz Agel Nam Sanch. Mbali, Letabo, Lebo, congratulations to all of you for making it this far. South Africa has seen you, has seen your businesses, and we hope you benefit from that exposure. The opinions we give you are of three experienced entrepreneurs, but we're not experts. Um, we don't have all the answers. You understand your business a lot better than anybody else, but we hope that the feedback we give you will give you something to reflect on, you'll learn something from it, and hopefully something comes through and changes um, aspects of your business. I'd like to just say a few words to Walk Fresh and uh, Le Revolo. So, Litawa, I think your business is great, and uh, you have, you're certainly ahead of the others who are in a similar business to yours, so well done on that. Um, what I think I just want to pose as a watch out for is really what your cost to serve and uh, being able to carve out clearly what is it really costing you to put that whole service together and what are you getting it for it what are you getting for it back and how do you improve those margins but well done on a great business with the Rebolo, uh, I like the niche part of your business you're very specialized niche and focused and it is in, a, in an area that is um, you know, a scarce skill within the country. So that's very, very good positioning for you. Uh, what I'd like to see more, more is really the queue of the business, the business queuing up and you not being able to, to serve, to deliver the, the service because you're just too busy. I'd like to see the volume come through, basically. Yeah. Lucas. I think maybe let me start with, uh, with Mbali. Um, Mbali, you've got a great or you're in a, in a great industry. Um, I don't know if you have, as a business, been able to capture that. The problem that I want, I want you to start focus, be a little bit more creative in that space. Be creative, have imagination, think like a kid. You know, you remember that you're servicing kids. Think like a kid, when they get into the salon, what is it that is going to make kids jump up and down and that? And kids are very loyal clients. Once they love it, they will come back for more. So be a little bit, you know, I, I felt that you lacked a lot of imagination in that space to get things, things happening and that. Be more creative in that. Um, and then uh, what I need to start seeing from you is the quality. Okay, um, furniture business is a very cutthroat business. You're competing with Chinese manufacturers and everything and that, and, and they pushing stuff that is cheaper and that has got great quality. They able to do that because they pushing huge numbers, huge quantities. Now, if you go into that space and you are not pushing such quantities and that your quality has got to be your defining factor. So, guys, the person that's walking away with the 50,000. On the basis that we believe that that money 
will make the most impact on their business. So when we did the maths and we said, if you put 50,000 here, what's going to come out on the other end? And how big is that shift going to be based on the investment? So purely from a numbers perspective, if you put in this money, what's coming out on the other side? The business that made the most sense. is Defos Furniture Business. Congratulations. And well done. Nice. Sure. Well, congrats, Kulu. How are you feeling, man? I owe this to my mom. Yeah. And the kids. They'll get sanitaries and stuff as long as I'm alive. I owe this to them. But that money is not going to the charity. It's going into the business. Apart from the whole price money, there was so much value for us. We're doing things that we could have never imagined we would be doing. Like, uh, the leadership program that we're planning right now, we're working on. I don't think we would have done that on our own if we hadn't been in this platform. So I really feel good about it, and it's a learning curve for us. It's, it's honestly a learning curve. It's not a lose. I don't think it's a lose. For me, I'm going back to being a child, and I hope that would also better my customers' experience. Since I feel more, my business is more leveling because the tips are really great. People buy Lauren Barbera. Make moves, live on a banal that atmosphere on a right. Come on, Rumbrat Lapella thing every day. E, no boom, I expect tongue and plumbut to the pumile. Ah, being I expect tongue, to be honest, putting the pumile, I was I was quite humbled by what just happened. And I bang a tawang would he in those in fear who top four who mm. were making moves on such a big. Uh, program and with uh, such uh, great companies that mm. we are competing with and I've learned a lot from the guys that have been on the show and I've learned a lot since I've been on the show. Mm. So I can say from being on the show I've been like uh, running the business more professional and I'm proud of myself for doing it. Yeah. Mm. Well done, good one. Bon I know, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, I'm going to go to the city. 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 I'm going to go to the city.